The meta has been rapidly evolving with a bunch of different new lines, things like the Senna tech, things like Fine Vintage, and as the set is progressing, more and more things, even within the exact same patch, have been starting to come out of the woodwork. So, in today's video, we're going to be actually going over a pretty interesting variation of the Yone line, and just why it works, how to play around it, etc. Um, I gotta give credit where credit is due. This was actually taken from Water Park Tactics over on Twitter. Uh, I don't actually know the people behind this, but uh, shout out to them. This is the quote-unquote the proper Yone line. And I remember reading this initially thinking like, oh, I mean, I don't really know too much about it. I, how good could this be? It, it feels kind of wrong on initial impression. Because the, they're saying basically is that the default board is for Reaper and for Behemoth. Which is already raising a couple eyebrows because Behemoth itself is just not really that great of a trait. Um, it's just something that a lot of pros and higher level players are sort of looking at Behemoth and being like, this needs a buff. Like, Behemoth doesn't feel like, like a real trait. Even in the center line, you don't really activate Behemoth until much, much later, and you're main tanking a Behemoth unit. But, in this case, this Yone board, which I will pull this up for a second right here, but this is the main idea. And actually, I have to pull up on Tactics.Tools, and this is a little more clear. We have, basically, Yone 3, you reroll at 7. This is, as you may have noticed, 8 units. So, until you are level 8, you just don't play the Malphite. I actually think you might just... No, yeah, it's definitely dropped the Malphite. Um, I was thinking maybe it's one of these, but you need this for the Umbral, you need this for Ghostly, so that doesn't make sense. But, you drop those two, you drop the Malphite for now, and then you play this on 7. You reroll for the Yone 3. And just all your other four costs as well, the Orin 2, the Kane 2, if you can find it. And then once you eventually find everything, you can just push Tempo to level 8. And then you are chilling with the Malpha on your board with 4 Behemoth and 4 Reaper. This was surprisingly super, super strong. Like, I, I was kind of blown away at how successful this board ended up being. Because it seemed to have salvaged a pretty crazy spot. Uh, which we'll be watching later. Because this soap actually ended up playing this line and it looked pretty underrated in my opinion it actually looks pretty decent uh this soap also is a certified yone hater he hates the yone line he doesn't think yone is very good so the fact that he, this soap was kind of forced to play into yone and then come out you know with a very surprising result i think it's worth definitely talking about this line uh just to give you an idea as well inside of the explore stats as well yone 3 stats by itself is actually a 3.65 but then if you include for behemoth it is a 3.4. So it actually goes up, which is pretty interesting to see. But just to keep in mind, and just for some comparison's sake, if you look at 4 Umbral, it's actually averaging a 4.08. And this is actually, quote unquote, the main line as of as of recent. I think a lot of people are thinking of 4 Umbral, 4 Reaper. But nowadays, 4 Behemoth seems to be the main line. Because usually, I guess this means you got to level 8. So you, you got to stabilize at some degree. But this is still very surprising to see. This is not something that I was expecting at all when initially reading this uh this twitter post but uh shout out to water park tactics because this is pretty pretty dope uh one last thing before we start the vod review and watching digital play the line um i think where was it someone here wrote so you're rolling for yone on seven and passing by a loon who is broken his shit plus applies anti-heal perfectly yeah good guy and then they just respond yes i am rolling on seven yone and passing on a loon who does not apply anti-heal by the way shreds mr dumbass yone is the one who applies anti-heal very good comment check yourself before you wreck yourself iron four <laughs> I thought that shit was not funny. But, anyways, let's get on to the VOD review. So, this was, again, taken from Dish Soap's stream. This is actually, uh, I normally don't watch things on Twitch itself, but I, I, as soon as I saw this, I was like, I, I need to share it with you guys. So, we're going to watch that 2x speed here. I want to have as much freedom with the commands as I normally do, but that's totally okay. I'm also going to mute the VOD as well, just because uh, it's going to be a little bit distracting listening to t him talk while, uh, while we're playing the game. But anyways, loot description, champion delivery, and prismatic party. We are inside of prismatic party, aka triple prismatics high, high variance. Mm. Also, please don't forget to drink water. Very important. But starting off already with a Rek'Sai star, nothing to really talk about, and a Loon already out of the orb. So a Loon is sort of one of those units you don't really think too much about. 99% uh, of the time, I think you're just selling it. But we do have the Darius pair as well. So already, I know this so by the way, is a huge faded player. He loves holding on to the Aries, loves holding on to the Yasuos. Uh, Darius is really great inside of the faded opener as well, because you usually end up playing something like Yasuo, Ari, Darius. Uh, along with a faded unit such as Kindred or the Thresh, depending on what you find. But as we can already see, we do have one Yasuo in our shop. We do have the Duelist Opener. Uh, not not pers not exactly, but it's there. We do have a Rod, which is a little unfortunate. It's good for Ginsu, but that's about it, and we're angling a Felios. But nonetheless, we do skip the Senate as well, and we're given our two on Augments, Freaky Friday, Duelist Crown, and Radiant Relics. Duelist Crown is really, really good. I, 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 if I'm dish soap in this spot, I'm actually already thinking about taking Duelist Crown and just like screaming GG because Vertical Duelist is such a good comp. It's very, very solid. 
Um, and I think most of the time, uh, as long as you're uncontested, it, it's a very good time. I, I really like Duelist Crown. Yone, actually, funny enough, is one of the best Duelist Crown holders at the moment. So this is a really, really interesting line. Um, I, I do think Duelist Crown is great here. Personally, I would take it. But I can also understand if you want to skip it if you're contested. Or maybe you want to go for a Freaky or Radiant. They're fine. Nothing necessarily that is like outstanding, but nonetheless... Uh, I personally would go for Duelist Crown, but I can see that if he scouts and he thinks like somebody else is playing Duelist, it's not the way to go. So he rerolls left side, um, and then he sees Living Forge. And Living Forge, by the way, terrible stats. It used to be kind of decent, but now it's not that good. He actually rerolls Duelist Crown here. I think he rerolls it mainly because he doesn't want to contest Duelists. Uh, I think somebody else was playing it, but also I think he just generally normally doesn't really play Duelists too often. And I don't think Duelist Crown... Actually, Duelist Crown 2-1, I don't even know how the stats are, but... Uh, Duelist Crown 2-1 is actually 4.56. It's pretty mid. So, actually, I can understand him not wanting to take it, and he ends up going with Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday has the highest AVP across all the arguments that he could have taken. It's not, like, broken as it was in previous sets. Um, I don't really have an explanation as to why Freaky Friday used to be an augment that, like, you would, you're always happy to take. But nowadays, you don't see it as often. I think Triforce itself, as an item, just feels a little bit more lackluster than it has before but again i i don't think they've changed anything about it so i don't really know why that's the case but maybe there's just no good like triforce holder too hard in the early game outside of darius maybe but nonetheless he decides to go for it and it's perfectly fine uh freaky friday just so you know is actually um because uh, spoilers we already talked about it ahead of the time we are eventually going to angle yoni this game and like i said before certified yoni hater but not gonna lie Freaky Friday is still amazing in Yone. If you think about it, it's a Triforce for Yone and a Triforce for K. It's, it's actually a very good augment for this line in particular. But again, he took it because I think he's trying to be flexible with his augments. He took the one with the highest AVP, and he's still trying to play around Faded. It, again, this soap loves Faded. That's actually why you saw him not level at 2-1 uh, and 2-2, two, two, because he wanted to hit the Faded pairs. Specifically, he wanted to find Yasuo, he wanted to find Ari, and that's why even on our board right now, despite it, you know, looking a little jank, he's just playing nothing but Faded, going for that 5 loss, but trying to kill things here and there uh in terms of our item components as well we do have a uh, rod i believe rod sword and crick glove that is open right now and because again they're so certified faded lover definitely just immediately goes for the bow i guess not immediately i think he's thinking about it but he eventually goes for the bow here uh it's probably for ginsu's but because he is loose streaking he's not like motivated to particularly slam it by any means but that's totally okay. We're going to sit here and we're going to just kill, st bleh, sit chilly and try to uh, go for that 5 loss. So already 20 gold, 3 loss, per looking perfectly fine. He actually scouts a fortune player who's inside of his pool, who has 2 for 1. But they actually already have Kabuko 2 and Zoe 2. So going into this fight here, he actually opens his board quite a bit here, playing nothing but Ari and Yasuo 1s. And it's actually very, very prudent of him to do so because not only does it grief the fortune player, it actually makes his spot significantly stronger, right? Give him that 3 loss into a 4 loss, turning it into a very easy 5. This is in a very, very good spot here. Uh, going into a random encounter here, it is the Nico encounter, which gives you a random 3 star 1 cost. Not necessarily that swingy by any means, but it is a little interesting to see that this uh, particular encounter actually activates the trait. So he actually does have um, 1 out of 2 Heavenly and 1 out of 2 Behemoth, which I don't remember doing that inside of the PvE, but I mean, hey, I guess things change. But looking now, it looks like uh, we're fighting into a covalent spark. So the radiant ionic spark. And it's a very, very just landslide. 73 HP on a 5 loss. Pretty fucking good. Not gonna lie. I 5 loss, I'm at like 66. I fucking suck. So here we get the RE2. Thank God. And we are finally starting to see a couple more upgrades. We're still level 4. Um, so we're not really gonna see two it's not very likely for us to see things like the yasuo or not the yasuo sorry the thresh or the affiliates so we're kind of just chilling um not really sure what we're looking for particularly i think he's just looking for affiliates items in general again he's a like i can't stress how often this guy plays faded like every time you load up a dish sub stream one in three one in three chance he's probably playing faded to some degree whether it's his opener whether it's his mid game whether it's he's trying to fast nine with it whether he's trying to play a failure's reroll there's a lot of different variations and directions you can go with it so that's why dish soap's main strategy this entirety of the patch has been mostly just play faded it's strong even with an emblem things sh can shake up with seven faded so can't lie I, I i fully respect the strategy and for good reason he's already challenger and i'm not i'm like well, let's just say I'm not there yet. Anyways, moving on to the augments here. Uh, going into our 3-2 augments, and it should pop up soon. Sorry, I'm not used to this. I'm used to just fast-forwarding to when I want to be talking. Uh, new Recruit, Baboom, and Impenetrable Bulwark. Um, none of these are particularly that great. New Recruit is kind of mid. Uh, it, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. But it's not, like, amazing. So uh, there's Baboom and Bulwark. Baboom, again, not the greatest either. 
I actually don't think Baboom stats are... I'm, I should double-check Baboom stats, but I am not a believer in this augment. It's a 4.76 at 3-2. Uh, not that great. But I think Digital right now is kind of thinking about, like, he needs a little bit more combat power, a little bit more oomph on his board. So maybe Baboom is the best choice here, but... Uh, it's hard to say. Personally, I would lean new recruit here. Uh, he actually rerolls left and right side, and he actually takes Baboom, which is kind of interesting to see, because I don't know, um, why, to be honest. I think Baboom only works under, like, very certain compositions, so if anybody has, like, a, a take on why he took Baboom in this spot in particular, like, maybe he's looking for a little bit of more econ, or a little bit more combat power, rather, um, that was the reasoning behind it. And if that's the case, you know what? I can buy it. Um, again, the AVP is pretty fucking low. And Freaky, you could argue, is kind of like a combat augment because it gives more combat power onto our board with the two Orn items. But he's dish soap. So something must have clicked in his head where he went, yeah, I gotta take Baboom here. Uh, which is, again, very interesting. I feel like Baboom, it's, it's again, something you only really see in Kogma and Syndra. Uh, but even then, it's not amazing. But it is actually kind of decent in the Yone line. So his augments are actually kind of decent for Yone. Um, specifically, Baboom, I think, is actually kind of good for Yone as well. Because uh, Kane, specifically. Kane just keeps casting, casting, casting like a Beyblade. And uh, because he does that, he just keeps rocking the Baboom. And it's uh, it's kind of nice. So I can definitely see him like kind of leaning towards Kane here, even though I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to. Uh, I do have the VOD muted, but you the entire if you want to go back, I will have this link in the uh, description below. But if you go back and watch this VOD and you listen to him during all of stage two, this guy is like certain like actually fucking hates Yone. I'm not saying this out of speculation. I genuinely mean like this guy would not stop talking about how much he hates playing Yone. And he would have played Duelist earlier in this game at like 3-1-3-2 because I think there's a Tristana Volley in his shop. But he said no, specifically because someone's already playing Duelist. So I think someone took Duelist Crown. So he's like, fuck, what am I going to do? I have to play Duelist. And look at his spot, by the way. He's 46 HP. He's finally like saying like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to play Yone. I have to play Yone. There's like, what else am I going to play in this spot? Like, Aphelios is taken. I haven't seen a single Aphelios. I haven't seen a single Thresh. My game plan is falling apart. Somebody else is playing Duelist and I wanted to play Duelist. So plan B fell apart and now we're stuck on plan C. So you already know, this so like, this is how much Dishlope does not like this comp. Despite the fact that his spot is actually kind of decent for it. Um, you know, he really, really, really was waiting to his last final breath and not fucking play this shit. And... It's very surprising too, we're 3-5 and we're still level 6 making a bunch of econ, which is insane. This is not normal at all. This spot, to be completely honest, if you ask most players, this spot, the AVP is probably an 8. You're level 6, you have a decent amount of money, but you have nothing going for you. No upgrades, no like good pairs, no nothing. Like, we hit the only pair just now. But uh, overall, like we didn't slam any items throughout like basically the majority of stage three until this round in particular. So our spot is really fucking weird to be honest. This was I, I remember seeing this thing like because I, I know where he placed because his tracker's on the top left. My camera's covering it, so you can't see it exactly. But I remember seeing his, the placement in this game and thinking that doesn't sound right. Something must have happened. Uh, but anyways, as you can see here, we are slow rolling a little bit on seven trying to find our upgrades. We found the Yone, which is great. The Yone too, which is very important. It's crucial for our stage four health. But also we do need to dig a bit more because we do need to hit that four Reaper. Again, this board does not fit on seven. It fits on eight. So we are not going to be playing the Malphite. We're going to dig for that one cane and then get the cane in and then switch it over the Malphite and then call it a day. We had to roll again very deep to find it, but it was crucial. It was absolutely integral for us to hit it. And if we did not, then it, the game's actually over. But and then shout out Hodge onto the cane. And right now, we're actually looking at pretty bis items in terms of the Yone line. Uh, Yone really likes BT Titans. He doesn't like crit as much as people initially thought he does, but BT Titans is very, very great on him. And Hodge is great on Kane. Gives us a little bit of that extra crit, and crit works amazingly with the way that his ability works. But going into now the 4 2 Blinding Speed Final Session Golden Egg. Definitely not Golden Egg. We don't have the HP to even try and spare to try and hatch that thing. And I don't know about you guys, but recently, Golden Egg. Uh, Feels like a fucking scam. Like, that this shit's terrible. It, it hatches, and you're like, that's it? So, I'm not a big fan of the Golden Egg. Uh, I definitely would reroll it here if I were him, and he does. Uh, Ascension also makes no sense. Um, y Yone, like, does... The fights do kind of tend to last a little bit, but, like, you're down a Prismatic the first 15 seconds of a fight. That it, That's the big reason why a lot of people don't even like Ascension in the first place. So... We're probably not going to be taking Ascension here. He does reroll re on the left side here, and then we get Ghostly Crown and Harm Assist. And out of all of these, uh, Harm Assist is the only, like, even remotely takeable option. Ghostly Crown makes no sense. Uh, we already have two Ghostly activated, no way to fit in four. Uh, unless we go to level eight, but then we're down to three Behemoth. It makes no sense. Overwhelming Force, we already have our items. Makes no sense. Harm Assist is the only correct option here. So, we have taking Harm Assist, and now we are just basically sitting ducks. 
Like, now we're kind of sitting here, like our hands are crap, crap, sorry, clasped together, praying to God, like praying to Mort. Because like, what the fuck? Like th this spot, like it's actually for a level seven stage four two board. Solid. It's not terrible by any means. We have a two star three cost carry. Uh, decent amount of upgrades. Shen upgraded, Yorick upgraded. It's all right. Couple four costs. That's all right. Uh, for stage four, but then stage five is gonna hit. How the fuck are we hitting Yoni three? We're 30 gold on 7, Yoni 3, or Yoni 2 rather, sorry. No other copies. It's a pretty fucking tough spot to be in. But anyways, he is this for a reason. And we are sitting on a Shitter Nico, so maybe there is a little bit of hope. You should see he rolls a little bit here. Um, I think the only reasoning he did that was because he was like, Oh, I'm sitting on Kindred Pair and I'm sitting on uh, Orn Pair. And hitting either of them is like a noticeable spike, specifically Orn 2. So he's totally down to try and roll for it and didn't find it. Totally okay. Um, he's probably a bit anxious in this spot. I know I would be as well. I, I, I honestly, I'm probably shitting myself if I were him in this spot. I'm 27 HP. Like, nah. Like, this, this shit's fucked up. Uh, anyways, but surprisingly enough, welcome to a triple prismatic high challenger lobby. 4-3, someone's already fucking dead. So, that guy's not having a good time. Maple Arrow already out at 8. But, just so going into the carousel here, he picks up a belt. Um, I can't recall exactly why. Oh, he has an open rod. So, he's just going for the Morello here. Uh, for Morello, in case you didn't know, it, the holder is usually Kindred. Just because Kindred just kind of hops around and procs the Morello here and there. And also, just random Kindred too. Because sometimes do, like, some level of damage, especially with 4 Reaper. So... It's, I mean, at, like, late game, Kindred 2 damage is laughable. But for, like, stage 4, stage 5, even for, like, you know, that extra 1 to 2k bonus damage that you get into your board, it's not bad by any means. 1 to 2k is totally okay. But anyways, moving on. Uh, Yone, again, look at the fights, by the way. They are surprisingly not, like, they're not terrible. We're winning, we're force streaking, we're chilling. Um, we actually, by the way, pumped to level 8. Which is something noticeable as well. He pumps to level 8 uh, that last turn because he was like, listen, I have zero fucking Yones. If I want to play for the highest placement possible in this spot, I need to just level to 8 and then just hope that this 4 Behemoth is a big enough spike along with the Heavenly and hope that it's good. Because, by the way, the Heavenly, it gives us crit on our Yone, gives crit for Hurricane, it gives Armin and MR to the whole team. It's nothing to snooze at. It's actually a very substantial spike. So leveling here, despite the fact that it puts us at zero, also secures our five streak, meaning that we are able to go and, you know, generate a little bit of econ throughout our interest. We do hit one Yone out of the shop here, which is super nice. But again, we're still on Malphite pair, Orin pair. Uh, and I think we're on a Kha'Zix 1. I could, we could be Kha'Zix 2, but I could be mistaken. But that looks like Kha'Zix 1 to me. But our boards are looking great. And we're approaching stage five. And stage five is sort of, if you didn't know already, kind of when people are sort of expecting to hit at least one of their three star three costs um that is sort of the general tempo at least that's how it's been in past sets uh not really sure if that really holds true for set uh 11 but it looks like this is rolling here and he actually finds a lot of fucking yones so he rolls here again he rolls because he knows that within you know typical tempo especially in a prismatic lobby where the tempo is accelerated uh he really should be having this yoni three already uh he doesn't find it which kind of sucks but as we can see here, because he didn't hit it, he is now losing. And we are already down 5-1, and we are losing HP. But through the miracle of Mortdog, we hit the final Yone and an Orn in the last shop, and we finally managed to hit our board. And keep in mind, being able to hit the Yone 3 from his spot was very high roll. It was very high roll that he was able to hit it. But keep in mind, he also put himself in probably one of the worst spots in a long time. Where, like, he basically said, it's all or nothing, first or eighth, I will hope this works, or I will die trying. And, so far, it's a top five. And considering his spot at 4-1, and this is his spot now, it's not that bad. Uh, or, by the way, RE encounter uh, gives a little bit of extra HP, AP, or AD to your team, depending on what you choose. Excuse me, I had a little bit of salmon pasta today. Uh, you know, I feel like I always mention the pasta that I eat uh, whenever I do these VOD reviews. It's, I don't know if it's weird, but... I don't mean, I, I gotta share my day with somebody, you know? It's tough out here. But, <laughs> that was kind of sad. Uh, anyways, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, he's donkey rolling because uh, he's not. He's never going fucking 9 this game. He's never going 9, and uh, we're like, Kane 2 is Kane 2. Like, we could really use that Kane 2. Uh, also, we're 1 HP. Like, if you're 1 HP, chances are you're probably donkey rolling unless you're super confident that your board is stable. Uh, going into the 5-4 carousel here, nothing in particular screams is, like, super great. Um, he actually opts to go for the Guard Breaker here, which is understandable. You could make an argument for the Kane, but because it's right next to our Orn, Orn's gonna farm an item for our Kane, which usually it's good enough. 
Um, it does take a little long because it doesn't have any starting mana, nothing like a vow or like a redemption to help it. But also Kindred 2 is probably going to do a little more damage, especially with uh, the items that it has. Guardbreaker seems to be the best option here. It's really close, I'm not going to lie. Like that death blade was looking really promising. But the fact that we know Orn is going to farm an item for our cane, I guess it's fine. Um, it it's really tough though. It's really tough. But anyways, looking at this fight here again against Kerm's board. Kerm, by the way, level 9, 20 gold. Uh, this though, down to one life, he can barely beat Kerm's board. But, uh, again, Donkey Rolling trying to find our unit. Uh, but this spot's looking precarious. It's looking very precarious. But you can't lie. If you, you, when you saw the spot at 4-1, there's no way you're looking at this. You're like, this is a fifth? Minimum a fifth? Who knows? We're about to find out. Uh, going into McGarkey here, who's playing the actually the new tech, the Senna reroll line. Uh, specifically, the Senna with the Ghostlies. But... Uh, it's actually no good because specifically he's Infernal Contract in a triple Prismatic Lobby. Uh, Infernal Contract is like the bailout augment. Basically, you take it because you're like, hey, my spot is fucked as shit. I'm going to hit everything on 4-2 and pray that's enough to bleed out into a fourth. That is what uh, Infernal Contract is in a nutshell. But keep in mind as well, Infernal fucking Contract uh, in a triple Prismatic, high challenger, high tempo lobby. Nah. It's, it's a really bad augment to be taken, especially the higher you climb. So, you really do want to only take it, like, as a last-case scenario. Uh, it seems that we are popping the end of the hill. By the way, I want you to think about this. What would you take in this spot? We just found Arcane 2. Arcane could use another item. What are you taking in this spot? I'll give you a hint. Oh, actually, you know what? You know what? You know what? No, no, no. I'll wait for you to lock in your answer first. Did you lock in an answer yet? What, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? In this spot, the correct answer is, and as Bapple Tree has actually said it, and Hash has said it as well, it is Redemption. Redemption for Orn. Uh, the main reason is because Titans is not necessarily a great item by any means, but Redemption is a fantastic tank item. Gives a little bit of extra healing for our cane, and it'll make the Orn cast a little bit faster so we can farm an item for our cane pretty, pretty quickly. Um, good job, by the way, chat. Getting it right. Very good, good shit. Uh, it, it's not ideal. If, definitely at the end of the day, we would have preferred like a really good cane item. Something like an IE. Something like a guard breaker. Something like, I don't know, GS, Deathblade. Uh, but we didn't hit any of those. So it is what it is. Uh, it looks like, by the way, Dishope is finally starting to be able to chill a little bit. We're just down to 1 HP. We do have a Kindred 2 in shop. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing to be taking by any means. Especially because look at the HP that Kurum has. He's 64. And if we are ever going to win out... Um, we would probably want to try to hit 9 at some point. But keep, but like the, the weird thing about this board is that on level 9, like what do you put in? Another Heavenly unit? Huey? Azir? I don't know. But this up actually wins his fight and actually Weijin ends up going 5th this game, which is pretty insane to consider that this up spot was looking fucking terrible. He's lost one fight ever since stage 4-1, which is pretty fucking nuts. So shout out to... Oh no, well, that's not true. He lost, a, he lost a couple here and there. But... Still, the fucking go to Vene for a reason. Very making very little mistakes since 4-1. I mean, I don't know, it depends. It depends if you look at his like stage two and three, you go like those are mistakes, like not slamming anything or whatever. Um, it definitely goes against a lot of your fundamentals in TFT. But Dish Soap actually wins this fight again, and guess what? McGarkey loses at Dish Soap. Surprisingly enough, it's a top fucking two. Phoenix goes in third, McGarkey in fourth, Dish Soap is a second. So like yo, oh, like they're like It's a second, man. It's a fucking second. Like, what? He, like, his spot was fucking terrible. Low HP, no money, barely had the copies that he needed, and now look at it. He were level 8. We have everything upgraded, which is great, but we're, like, this level 8 board, like, surprisingly enough, like, does a lot of work. Uh, some little interesting positioning tech as well. He actually frontlines the Yone here. Uh, the reason being is because if the Yone casts, it'll actually go all the way into the backline here, which is pretty interesting to see. I did not pick that up the first time I saw this, so... Uh, very nice little niche tech that uh, Dishop is doing, but I don't know how good it's going to be, especially considering that um, the other guy, or rather Kurum, has like an Eternal Winter right on the front line, so I'm not sure how well this is going to fare. I'm not sure if that's going to keep working for us, but Dishop actually manages to get the level 9 here, and then finally texts in that Kiana for a little bit of extra Heavenly, and a little bit of that AD that we get from the Heavenly bonus, plus 10 AD. Can't go wrong with it. Uh, it looks like, again, he positions pretty well, dodges the Eternal Winter for his... Uh, Kane, and then his act actually funny enough, Orn farms us a QSS for Kane. Sorry, I said Kane, Yone in the middle, dodged the Eternal Winter, Kane got the QSS. So, pretty sick. Um, why does Kane have a QSS? Wait, did we just get the wait? Have you had this QSS? Am I stupid? I think I'm stupid. Am I stupid? I'm probably stupid. Anyways, 
moving on. We're gonna ignore that. Uh, Keanu 2, really great. And then, uh, maybe find some other things, but whatever. But anyways, uh, going here, popping up the anvil. It's just gonna be an orn item. Adaptive seems perfectly fine. Spark is pretty interesting as well. Um, Spark... You probably think Spark is a little bit better than the Adaptive Helm, but I, I think it's close. I, th I think both are fine. We don't necessarily have AP damage by any means, but I think it's still okay. Uh, going into this fight here, it looks like his Yoni's kind of trolling a little bit with the way that he dashed, uh, but that's going to do it for Kurum. Kurum goes first, and Dish Up ends up going second. So it wasn't a first, but like you can't cap, man. Like This was a pretty fucking insane game where he had the worst position imaginable and still came back with this really interesting Yoni tech. But that's basically going to do it for this VOD review. I hope you guys learned something. Take care, guys, and happy climbing.